Hi everyone and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and I will talk today about Evernote again. Evernote 10 in fact. If you follow this channel then you know that I talked about this already in my previous video where I had a first look at the desktop version and all the features and what they changed. If you haven't seen this make sure you check this out. Today we will go into the comment section of this video and actually read through the comments that you released there because I realized so many complaints going on with this Evernote release that I thought we will discuss this in this video now and I have to say I agree with most of you. So what this will be, let's find out, let's roll it. So when I look at the video, I mean most of you like the video, but I get a lot of thumbs down. This is usually not really the case on my videos. And if this is the case, then I look very closely to the comments below because I always try to improve my videos and to see what I can do next to make things better. However, in this case, I get the feeling that there were a lot of thumbs down due to the release of Evernote. Uh, I just want to make clear, if you're not happy about the release from Evernote, make sure you go in the comments, write down what your complaints are. But the thumbs down is actually rating my channel. So if this is really the case, give it a thumbs down, no problem, but let me know in the comments below why you actually gave the thumbs down. Okay, with this out, the, out of the way, let's go into the comment section. So Attila Balok said, unfortunately, the new Evernote is not better, not even the same. It's just a copycat of the web. So a lot of desktop features has been dropped. I see that it is easier to maintain from development side, but as a user, I'm disappointed. How can it be that with an upgrade, the app is losing a lot of features, saving development costs? Okay, so I see exactly what you mean there. The web version was already very limited compared to the desktop version. Just, you know, talking about tech functionality and all this. I agree with you. However, we really have to keep in mind what Evernote has done over the past two years regarding the back end, the servers and all this. And also to harmonize those apps. They actually had to rebuild them from scratch and now publish them over the different platforms. No excuse there, Of obviously. It makes absolutely sense that, well, the customers are angry. You are used to certain workflows. They are ripping apart some features you are used to use, actually and now we don't have them anymore. So I strongly hope that Evernote bring back those fe features as soon as possible because I really believe that they had to take away these features in order to get this new version out as soon as possible and now they slowly bring back these features into the new version but those features need to be built from scratch now. So I really hope for Evernote they have they should do this within a few months to publish one feature after the other like other companies do and if they planned out their money and everything the right way I hope they can achieve this that now we will consistently see Evernote coming back with all the features and even more than other apps can deliver because in the state right now I agree it's not that overwhelmingly exciting what we have there. It's even ripping apart for some features. So Ian Murray said, I was using the beta of this and I found the text at the bottom of note be infuriating. Not absolutely sure why, to be honest, but I think I will delay updating to keep them at the top. Nothing you've picked up makes me desperate to make the change. Yeah, there was nothing exciting new stuff. And I agree. Well, if you're used to have the text on top, this makes sense. Let me see. What app does what app does the tag some button? I mean, I was already this annoyed in the video I showed you that I have to reach out on the top right section to make some changes of my formatting. I mean, things like this. I really, I really miss the point how they actually do the UI development. There must be tools in place to calculate how you can improve the efficiency of your own app by placing the buttons on the right place. And there must have been a decision why they did this. And um, I can say <laughs> I would have put it somewhere else. All right, so it's the, it's the same for the text, but it seems like I'm not worried that it's on the bottom. I can live with this. So I had some issue with finding the new tagged items and Pierre Paul Landry 
is it Landry or Laundry? Laundry? I don't think Laundry. <laughs> but um, he mentioned new tech types and not found in search. Web version has had to bug for some time. Press refresh refresh and it's okay. And he's actually referring to a situation that I had in this video when I tagged the note and I started searching for it and it didn't show up. Okay, so if you run into this day in this issue, just press refresh. I did this as well and it, it showed up then as well. Okay, so I also missed the, the point that you can actually mark down uh, in some extent because I mentioned, oh, it's, it's not properly marking down. Like for example, putting text into bold or italics and so on. So obviously you can mark down by using hashtags for the headlines and you can make um, to-do lists using brackets. I think it's double brackets that you need to, to use there. I moved to Notion a week ago, just finished transferring all my notes over from Evernote. I'm relieved and happy considering all the complaints I've seen with the new Evernote upgrade. So you see, I'm using Notion as well. And it is my go-to knowledge management system. It has such so much more freedom building up your digital brain and having everything in a nicely presented way that Evernote still can't deliver. And I mentioned in this video as, as well, I'm using Evernote still as a document dump. So I'm just using Evernote to scan my documents there because I know it's easy to find them. I think this is something Notion lacks still. There's no OCR or something like this going on. And this is the reason why I'm still using Evernote for my document scanning and document management. And for knowledge management, I'm using Notion. So we had some discussion back and forth here. Yeah, so there's a discussion going on for Notion then and the lack of API. So obviously we have some pros and cons for both applications. And that's the reason why I just told you I'm using both applications right now for the reasons I just mentioned. So here again, to quickly add checkboxes in Evernote, just type two square brackets. Thank you very much, uh, Cassie Smith, um, for pointing that out. I missed that. Um, as I said, I, as I'm not using Evernote for any kind of to-do task management, I never was diving too deep into this to find this out. So that's very nice that you mentioned it in the comments below so others will know. How to record in Evernote 10 Windows? I didn't see any record button. So being on Evernote actually, and there is not much you can do with new notes. When you are on the iOS version, you have a lot more options to choose from, you know, like recording audio, scanning document and all this. Here you have a list of some templates that you can use, but I don't see in record button either. So I'm not sure what you actually know, what you actually mean. And I actually can't pronounce your name properly. But if you see this video, so that's my answer. I think on Windows, it will be the same situation. Is it Philip Molina? Um, sorry if I don't pronounce it right. Evernote, not for me anymore. I filled it with information that was already on the web. In my opinion, Obsidian or Devon Think are better tools or for knowledge management. So yeah, I heard about DevonThink a lot and I tested it on my own. It's very similar to Evernote when you need to keep your system on a local NAS or something like this, where you have everything stored locally. DevonThink is uh, certainly something that you can use. Um, and it also has different advantages over Evernote. Another alternative when we talk about alternatives here would be Nimbus nodes. Um, just type in Nimbus notes and I think you will get there or Nimbus note actually. Um, something that I checked out as well and I was pretty impressed because Nimbus note is actually a combination between Evernote and Notion. So that's really interesting to check out. I will certainly do a video about this as well, make a review about this because they also have a very powerful web clipper where you can record uh, videos as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss this one. And now let's get back. I think Notion and Coda guys are very happy with this upgrade. Yeah, Claudio Wrangel, I see what you did there. All right, so yes, they're happy about this because Evernote didn't release any any innovative, exciting stuff that is now the Notion killer or something like this. So this is, I think, what you mean by this, um, that they're pretty happy that there is not big, well, there's no competition here right now with the state of Evernote. Let's see what they get out in the upcoming month. What Evernote delivered after two years of development is a shame. You won't be able to use it as you were used to it anymore. I can only strongly recommend not to upgrade on version 10. Keep the old version as long as you can. 
So Stefan L, thank you very much for this comment. Um, I see exactly what you mean. That that's that's what many of you complain anyway. They took away features they had before, and I be I explained it in the very beginning um, the reasons for that. But it is really hard for an existing customer that you are used to a system that you are used to use. You have your productivity set up, and it is suddenly a drop in efficiency. So what Evernote did there by the release of this, it it decreased the efficiency of your productivity system that you set up using Evernote. So certainly people start looking around for other alternatives like Notion and all the other things, or you adjust to the new situation. But as there are less features now available, hmm, not sure if... Um, If this is actually a good situation now for Evernote right now. Okay, so Gonzalo Rain. Um, regarding the checkbox thingy, keep in mind Evernote now has single checkboxes as the one as the one you used in this video, the video I, sh I did before, and checklists where it auto adds another checkbox in each line. Okay, so there are two different types of checkboxes now in Evernote. But why? Why do we have now checklists and checkboxes? If you know the answer to that and why I should use one over the other, let me know. Maybe the checkboxes are just part of checklists. Yeah, but still, then it is not intuitive enough to find these things out by just playing around with it. And this is still something, for example, Miro, you can play with Miro and you will learn by using it. So that's not, I, I barely went to any help sites or something like this. It's more about the way you use Miro, you know, the, the workflows and all this, rather than um, learning how to use it. And here as well in Evernote, um, I think then it should be better integrated or um, more intuitive to learn. Otherwise, having checklists and checkboxes is just confusing to me. Okay, is another very good one, the vCoop. Did you check that table of contents feature is not there? Internally linked notes don't open in the app and need browser. Local notebook not there. Import folder missing. Oh my God. Well, if you had local notebooks and they're not opening anymore, that's really a bad situation. And um, another thing is when they open in the browser, there's no point in the desktop app. So you're right. Um, I think the Evernote version we have now, it's like Notion and all the other new tools that came out over the last two years, three years, they are actually using a web-based application. So what you have there is a desktop version is just showing the web actually. It's HTML that you see there and so on. And it seems to me that the Evernote version you had on desktop earlier, this was really a software that I built from ground up on those devices because obviously there was no iPad, there was no iPhone, there was nothing Evernote would run on. So this was built first. And this is why we had these local notebooks and everything in place. But obviously you cannot access local notebooks using your web browser, for example, to build them up. So I think um, this is really something I'm not sure if they missed this situation. Erzin B. The PDF search is broken. Does anyone else have the same issue? I checked it and uh, for me, all my PDFs are searching as before. So I have no issue with this. So it shows up the PDF and I highlight what I was looking for. So unfortunately it doesn't work on Surface Pro X. I can't say anything about it. I don't have a Surface Pro. Alaydin uh, Golich, sorry about that. So um, Evernote not support RTL for Persian and Arabic. For this reason, I try to find new software for my Note. Okay, well, uh, that's that's always an issue um, with these languages that not many apps support these anyway. Um, uh, also in the note-taking apps, and I think there are so many apps where you especially when it comes from writing from right to left, you really have to program the whole app in a different way. So that's bad that we have the situation that um, part of the population, you know, they have to wait for um, those companies to bring this out. But I also see it from the developer stand of view that it's not as easy to provide all the stuff at once. Um, so, but It seems Evernote never had this, so they just didn't add it, but they didn't take it away. That's that's what I think. Robert Cathcart. 
It's also missing some few options. My default was list on top with node on the bottom. This update was about unifying the platform. I'm giving Evernote a few months to really get back on its feet. Me too. I'm hoping that new features and bug fixes will come much more quickly once it gets its sea legs. Yes, I know I'm being forgiving, but I really would prefer not to switch to newer platforms. Despite its age, Evernote still is the best program for document management. Thank you very much, Robert. As I mentioned in the beginning, I absolutely agree with you. With its powerful and automatic OCR, exactly, flexible scanning functions and search, exactly, I agree. If any other note-taking app starts to compete on, the, on that front, then I might need to reconsider. Yes, Robert, 100% agree with your comment. And we have Tech51, who actually also agrees with Robert. So if you want to read through the comments in more detail, just make sure you hop over to this video and check them out. Okay, John Kester. So Evernote has a new, new desktop, not much there. I switched to Nimbus Notes, the one that I mentioned earlier in this video, actually. Many more features in Nimbus. I thought Evernote would have numerous new features. Not correct. I found hardly any. Sticking with Nimbus, more features, less costs. So as I said, you can check out this. I think they have also a free plan to get started with. Let's see, go to pricing and um, starter. Here we have a free plan. So I think you can check this out for free. So actually you can check this out for free. Hop over there and check it out. And then let me know what you think about Nimbus. And here there was also a lot of back and forth between Brian Scott and John been saying so if you want to read through the comments just go over there and read it how to convert handwriting text on graphic tablet into text on computer so um abhinav rajpati so i'm sorry about that if i pronounce it wrong again um so i i ask you uh, you mean in evernote or in general so you ask in general i didn't reply sorry i missed that one so i will reply to your comment right now so actually there are loads of different ways to convert handwriting to text on ipad os 14 if you're referring to an ipad actually when you're saying graphic tablet um, they made it really easy now to transcribe your handwriting to text by adding the new scribble feature so this means in any text field where you actually type text in usually you can write with your apple pencil into it and it will convert it directly to text um, there are also different uh, other ways so if you feel one of my inner circle you have a lot of resources there to find out you can use nebu the note-taking app to write long text and you can just convert it into a word document in, uh, that also transcribes it into type text you can use note-taking apps you can actually write them down and for example bring it into as a picture into Evernote it will make OCR so always watch out for OCR which means that it will be transcribed from your handwriting to text so it's a text recognition engine actually and um, it will become searchable but also you can then copy paste this converted text into other documents so i hope this helps a bit um, in general there are so many different solutions it always depends on and that's something you didn't mention in your comment unfortunately it depends on what software you want to use what um, hardware you're using and so on um, but there are different solutions uh, i certainly can help you if you're one of my inner circle members you can reach out to me personally and i help you out wait no preferences menu only to save data when closing the app no tabs anymore Am I blind or did they throw out the sort of stuff? No tabs? Yeah, that's actually a good point. We had the tabs before. And if, you, if you're using the web version, you can open up several tabs. If you're using Miro, for example, what I'm using for mind mapping, you have several tabs here as well that you can use for your different boards. Um, so I think Notion doesn't have tabs, but I can open up several pages for Evernote, uh, several windows for Evernote, I cannot open up a new window. Is that correct? So that's correct. It seems I can't open Evernote twice. If you know there's a solution for this, tell me in the comments below. But so far, I haven't found anything that I can open up Evernote twice, which is really bad. So I can't show two nodes next to each other in the desktop version. I have to actually use the web version to open up two tabs to do this. As I said, in Notion, I can just open up the uh, application twice with two different nodes next to each other or even more. And Miro also provides the tabs as that, that what you mentioned, Martin K, actually. So that's really, that's really a shame as well. And Mark Warner. 
Sorry for the dumb question. I'm a paid in full premium account user. I'm on Mac. My version of the software on my Mac is version 7.1. When I click on the check for updates, it tells me, uh, I think the answer is already here, what he needs to do to download the latest version. So you see, Thank you very much for being an awesome community, helping each other in the comments below as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Let's start a discussion in the comments below. I'm eager to learn more about what you think about this Evernote version that we just received there. And I'm sure Evernote will be interested as well. I hope so, because Ian, the CEO of Evernote, is planned to come to my show and, uh, you know, giving an interview and talking about this, I will go just to the top comment that I just missed where, um, let's see, where WLH wrote, Hey Tom, hope you will do an in-depth interview with Ian to ask the deep or tough questions. Looking forward to checking out the chat. If you accept fewer questions, I hope you can ask Ian. So he listed some questions here and I will try my best to incorporate them into this interview because, you know, if he's really behind the product, obviously he will be able to answer these questions. If he's not able to answer these questions, he can be thankful that he receives, he receives these questions because those are things that they should focus on, what their community actually likes to have in the app and what issues they have. So they should really look closely at videos with the comments like this below because I can tell for myself, I'm growing this business here just thanks to you, my community and your feedback that I received over the last years. So I kept improving things and I'm, you know, it's, it's an ongoing story. It never ends. You always can improve things, processes, become more efficient, productive and increase quality. Asking tough questions should be actually a good thing for any CEO out there. And I hope Ian will just take them with the spirit they're meant to. All right, if you like the video, as I said, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the interview with, with Ian. And also about new updates Evernote will bring out. I'm also talking a lot about Notion, Roam Research, Miro, Todoist. Those are really the tools I'm talking about on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you up next time.